Hi, my name is Sonalakshi Naidu and I'm a researcher in the Another Internet Freedom Foundation. Today we are here to discuss how you can better protect your digital rights against overzealous resident welfare associations. A resident welfare association is a voluntary body formed by the residents for the residents. It is self-financed and self-managed. Such associations are registered under the Society's Registration Act 1860, which is subject to various state-level amendments. The primary purpose of an RWA is to represent the interests of residents of a specific area or locality before government authorities, to collect money for the maintenance of common areas, to ensure good public infrastructure for the residents, and to organize workshops, cultural events, and so on. The role of resident welfare associations during the COVID pandemic is crucial in ensuring that residents and visitors adhere to government guidelines regarding wearing of masks and maintaining physical distance in common areas. Further, resident welfare associations are also responsible for ensuring the sanitization of common areas and facilitating the supply of essential goods to their locality. Recognizing the importance of resident welfare associations as stakeholders, the National Center for Disease Control has issued an advisory for resident welfare associations to support and complement governmental efforts to contain the spread of the virus. However, recent media reports indicate that resident welfare associations are stepping beyond their sphere. Several RWAs have taken it upon themselves to impose restrictions which make the lockdown regulations look pale in comparison. For example, an RWA in Gurga asked their residents to have their domestic help tested for COVID before they could enter the premises. This is clearly inconsistent with, with the testing guidelines framed by the Indian Council for Medical Research. The ICMR is the only compet competent authority for framing guidelines regarding COVID-19 testing. In another instance, in Noida, permission to enter a housing complex will be granted only if the entrant has a green status on the Arogya Setu app. The most recent order issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs on 30th May 2020 states that the use of the Arogya Setu app should be encouraged by employers on a best effort basis and that district authorities may advise individuals to install the app. The terminology used in these guidelines makes it abundantly clear that RWS have not been authorized by the government to mandate the use of Arogya Setu among residents and visitors, and they do not have any authority to prohibit entry to residential colonies on this ground. So what can an ordinary resident do? We encourage you to have a constructive dialogue with your RWA representative, highlighting the concerns about the accuracy and privacy of the Arogya Setu app. The app may be susceptible to false positives and false negatives due to an inherent limitation of Bluetooth technology, which is not a perfect proxy for virus exposure. Thus, where a person has not been exposed to the virus, he may still be shown by the app to be at risk for COVID-19. This is known as a false positive. If RWAs were allowed to force residents and visitors to download the Arogya Setu app and allow entry based on the status of the app, it could lead to wrongful confinement of certain residents and also the deprivation of livelihood of the working class service providers. Secondly, you could explain to them that the official MHA guidelines did not authorize resident welfare associations to require the mandatory use of Arogya Setu. Lastly, if you find yourself in a situation with an overzealous resident welfare association, first, ask them for a copy of the bylaws and the rules and the details of the procedure by which they were adopted. The Resident Welfare Association's Memorandum of Association and Bylaws will contain the procedure for amending existing rules or adding new rules. Generally, new rules or amendments cannot be made without a general body meeting. If the rulemaking procedure has not been followed, the rules will be invalid. Any rules which are inconsistent with governmental guidelines may be an abuse of power by the Resident Welfare Association and can be challenged in court. We recognize that individual residents and working class service providers may not always have the bargaining power 
to negotiate with resident welfare associations or approach the courts. Therefore, we have written to the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, the National Real Estate Development Council, and the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, seeking the issuance of an advisory which clarifies that the use of Arogya Setu mobile app cannot be made a precondition for entering the residential colonies. We are committed to ensuring that your digital rights are not lost as collateral damage in the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic. Finally, I would like to request you to visit our website on internetfreedom.in and also considering donating to us to support our work. All the work we do is supported by ordinary Indians like you who donate money to help keep us effective, independent and serving your fundamental rights as technology becomes a core part of society. Thank you for watching this video and keep engaging with us on the forum.